Some manufacturers make bikes that look pretty. Some manufacturers make bikes that look purposeful. Some manufacturers make bikes that look really angry. KTM is that manufacturer. This is their new 890 Duke R and it just looks so angry. If it was in a pub, you'd definitely go and have your beer somewhere else. The Duke has an 890cc parallel twin engine, makes 121 horsepower, and they're claiming a dry weight of 166 kilos. We get, I think we can safely assume about 180 kilos fully wet. So that is a punchy, lightweight bike in a really, really compact chassis. I always think you can tell quite a lot about a bike and a lot about what the manufacturer intends the bike to be used for by the tyres they come on. These Dukes come on, they might as well be racing slicks, mightn't they? That's a Michelin Power Cup 2. We were actually on track a couple of weeks ago on a GSX R1000 on them. That is a really, really aggressive sports tyre. That's, well, it's a track day tyre. It's a slick with a token few tread cuts in it to get through the, uh, the homologation laws for road use. That kind of points at where KTM see this bike. It says it's a bike for being a hooligan on, and that's very KTM of them. Throughout this bike, it has got super high performance and kind of sports track orientated components. It's got WP Apex forks and shocks. It's got massive, massive Brembo discs with huge monoblock calipers on it. It's got lightweight wheels. It's got a quick shifter. That's optional, but this one's got it on. You can even change the gear linkage round to make it run a race shift pattern to a reverse shift pattern for track use. Everywhere you look, it's like, it's a race bike, but they fit the wrong bodywork and the wrong handlebars. Potentially, it could be an incredibly fun road bike. Or is it just going to be a hard, harsh, crashy mess and actually unpleasant to ride on the road? I'm bored of talking about it. I've been dying to ride this bike all year. So let's get out, stick it on the mountain pass, wind the throttle open and see what she does. I think that KTM 890 Duke R is my favorite road bike of the moment. This moment right now. Obviously this moment right now is because I've just got off it and I'm really happy. But I think that is the best road sports bike I've ridden in my life, which is a big exaggeration. But no, it's not. I think it's true. It is a fantastic road bike. Where I'm confused is KTM's called this the, the scalpel, something daft like that. They've told us it's brilliant on track. It has track mode. It's got track tires it, it yeah i'm sure but it's an awesome road bike i feel like it's almost doing it an injustice to go on about how good it is on track because that thing is probably the ultimate road sports bike i couldn't think of any bike i'd have rather ridden on those mountain passes today than this ktm 890 Ducar. car that's high praise i didn't want to like it as much as i do but i really do what makes a great road sports bike and why have i come to this rather rather superlative filled conclusion well to be honest the tank range isn't amazing the wind protection's garbage uh the mirrors are lovely the mirrors are good is the seat comfy on a motorway don't know didn't try it it was comfy enough for a few hours of black and round mountain roads the luggage capacity terrible pillion seat pillion foot pegs nope none of them on this one yeah it's not a very practical bike but for going for a ride and making every corner really fun it's awesome it's brilliant a couple of things that made it work particularly well. One, awesome brakes. As anyone who rides fast on the road knows, sometimes you have to stop, sometimes things come the other way that you didn't expect. And knowing that with genuinely one finger on the front brake all day, I could stop the bike in a heartbeat, stand it on the front wheel in no, no time at all. That lets you kind of push a little bit faster when you're trying to ride to as far as you can see and having the confidence that at any time you can whack on that front brake and the thing will stop on a dime that makes riding fast on the road fun. I think the trick they've pulled as well is, you know, loads of people have got those big Brembo discs and monoblock calipers on their bikes. This thing's really light. It's, yeah, 166 kilos dry, which whatever that is wet, it's still a very light sports bike. 
and then you've got cornering ABS, you've got supermoto mode ABS, which lets you slide the rear tire, but keeps ABS on the front. So you've got a really perfect storm for stopping in a very short space of time. And the reason you need to stop is you'll probably be going a bit too fast. <laughs> Almost certainly. Even in KTM's literature, it says it has an LED headlight. So when you appear from nowhere, people can see you. I think they expect hooligans to buy this thing. Yeah, that motor, parallel twins are a very fashionable engine right now in the last few years every manufacturer i think has bought out a parallel twin bar Ducati. this one's got a really good blend of kind of torque and power in the lower rev range where you're using it on you know every time you're riding every road every corner you can be in high gear just rolling on and it pulls nice shove out the corner and then you can hang on to the revs and it screams it doesn't doesn't get peaky at the top but it keeps building and building and making more and more power in a way that's i'm going to describe as goldilocks it's fast enough that you get a buzz from it and you make good progress but it's not so ballistically fast that you're then going oh my god i'm gonna die or go to jail or both it's kind of a sweet spot 121 horsepower i think is a pretty good amount of power for a road bike and this bike kind of delivers it pretty damn perfect we've got go we've got stop those are the two most important bits the stuff in between chassis that is where this bike surprised me the most given historically ktm's ability to build mental slightly focused <laughs> slightly too edgy motorcycles if we think back to the original ktm super dukes and the super duke r's they were awesome bikes but they were harsh hard uncompromising uncomfortable at times um downright bonkers things given that history and given they called this the scalpel and have been battering on about how good it is on track i really expected this thing to be a rigid board of a bike i expected it to be clattering over the bumps skipping around in the middle of the corner i expected it to be pretty uncompromising for anything but smooth roads and 100 percent commitment i honestly couldn't have been more wrong i quite like being wrong sometimes because it means <laughs> we get a much better bike than negative Chris expected. It's got the WP Apex forks and shock, but what's interesting is they've got 140 mil travel front, 150 mil rear, which is maybe 10 to 20 mil more than you'd expect on your typical sports bike. And then that translates well into the ride on the road because on fast flowy roads and those mountain switchbacks where you're changing direction quickly, chucking the bike around all over the place. If a bike's too soft, if a bike's too compliant, it's all this wallowing and wobbling and you can't get it to settle and you have to kind of wait for the bike before you can stick it into a corner it didn't do that it just changed direction as soon as you flicked it onto its side it stayed there and it was very well behaved in that sort of fast aggressive riding and then at the other end of the spectrum when you're riding really bumpy corners some of those mountain turns are quite bad tarmac and the corners are real bumpy in the middle of the corner 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 how many times can i say corner and then i rode some roads that were like deliberately bad so potholes lumps gravel stones everything and normally a bike that behaves in the high speed stuff by having stiff suspension then when you put it on that yeah low speed mucky horrible gnarly rough stuff it'd be chattering and bouncing all over the place and this didn't do that either it behaved really well in both situations which i think is a pretty impressive feat and there's no clever electronic suspension trickery it's just good quality suspension set up really well and with a little more travel to cope with those rough roads not rocket science clever and I'm gonna say it, pure in a way. There's no electrical gimmickry disguising anything. It just is a well-sorted, well-set-up chassis that lets you get the most out of the brakes, the tires and the suspension and the engine. And uh, yeah, on that note, I don't think I'm gonna give it back. I think I'm gonna keep it and not tell KTM where I've moved to because I'm quite taken by this thing. There is, of course, a bunch of electronical trickery on this bike. There is a TFT dash, there is a quick shifter, I mentioned the ABS, traction control, ride by wire throttle, blah, 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 blah. Loads of clever bits. TFT dash actually gave me all the information I needed and it was easy to scroll through the different rider modes. Why would you want to do that? It is quite different across the modes. This one's got the optional track mode on it. If you put it in rain or street mode, it's a bit of a pussycat, super soft on the throttle. That made sticking at 30 mile an hour for three miles of boring village riding. That made that super easy then switching it to the track mode and the more aggressive throttle response sticking at 30 mile an hour didn't really happen it just went rap 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 and it wants to take off all the time which was awesome fun on the open road but pain in the backside in a village switching between them was a good idea and actually pretty easy on this control and this dash in track mode you can then turn things like wheelie controller in case you need to maybe do a wheelie you always need to do a wheelie on this bike
You can also turn the ABS into supermoto mode, which lets you slide the rear tire. So there's a few little nuances in those settings that you'll find your own way with, but yeah, it's nice that you can get to them, change them, and they're easy to adjust. The quick shifter, up and down quick shifter, that did my favorite thing. When you full gas in track mode, shifting up hard, it goes romp, romp, romp. I probably did four times more gear shifts than I needed to just because the noise made me smile so much. I did have a couple of times when my foot was touching the lever and it just made made the engine cut out. I don't know if that's a particularly this bike or my foot position or what. So I had a couple of little incidences of that, but nothing that really spoilt my ride. There must be something bad about it. There has to be something bad about it. The orange wheels get dirty really easy. That's that's a bad thing. That's terrible. You know, you'd oh, you'd have to keep cleaning them. Um, I used all of the fuel and now I've got to fill it up again. Maybe that's a bad thing, I don't know. Yeah, I'm struggling. I'm, I'm racking my brains to think of something I don't like about this bike. I like naked sports bikes. I like bikes that are fun to ride on the road and it has those boxes ticked really, really well. I ride loads and loads of different motorbikes. That's, <laughs> that's not meant to be a brag. I'm quite lucky, but yeah, it's not meant to be a brag, but it's to qualify what I'm about to say. I jump from bike to bike to bike. I keep bikes for a week at a time, two weeks at a time, then jump to the next one. I've got a few of my own bikes as well. So I'm always on and off. I never really ride the same bike for more than two or three days running. And doing that, you notice a lot of very subtle things about bikes. And you notice which bikes are fundamentally easy to ride and confidence inspiring from the minute you get on them. Certain bikes do this really, really well. Everyone knows it, but that great big German weird engined adventure bike, the GS. The GS. That is a good example of that. It's a bike that, love it or hate it, it's really easy to get on and ride and ride fast. It gives you confidence. The original, I'm not going to say the original, the 2012, 2013 era Duke 690, the single cylinder one, exactly the same thing. It was a bike that the minute you sat on it, it was light, it was compact, it was nimble, but it never felt intimidating. It was really easy to get on and ride. Street Triple, another good example. The original Triumph Street Triple, a bike that you just jumped on and immediately you felt like you'd been riding it for 20 years already. That doesn't happen very often with a sports orientated bike. By their nature, they're aggressive, they're fast, they're a bit tall, they're stiff. A bike like this that's pitched as an edgy, hard sports track grrr, bike, I jumped on it this morning, having never ridden it before. Cold, damp, greasy road, and it just felt like I'd been riding it for every day for the last three months. It was so easy to get on with. Nothing was snappy, nothing was pushing me out of my comfort zone straight away. When I wanted to go fast, it went fast, and when I wanted to bimble along and avoid the wet leaves, it did that. It steered where I expected it, braked when I expected it, went on the gas when I expected, which sounds like stuff you should take for granted on a bike, but believe me, when you ride everything, some stuff is at this end of the scale where it's really, really hard work, and some stuff is at this end of the scale where it's natural and effortless. And that, I think, is probably why I'm waxing lyrical so much about this bike. All the spec stuff, all the fancy bits, all the Brembo brakes and the bright orange wheels and all that stuff is great, but it's no use if you can't use it and you don't feel confident and comfortable using it. And that's the trick this bike pulls. How or why or what numbers make that happen? I have no idea. I'm not sure any of the engineers at these places do either. I think it's one of those things that sometimes the bike comes together and it's just right. And that 890 Duke R is just right. They've done a blinding job of making an easy to ride bike that can go as mad as you want to or as calm as you want to. And at 10, 10, 399, so just under 10 and a half grand, it's a hell of a, hell of a lot of fun for your money. And if your thing is riding fast twisty roads, classic sports bike stuff, and the odd track day, go and have a go on one of these. Tell us what you think, because I'm hard pushed to find something I don't like about it.